Hello, thanks for coming by. Welcome. Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio 355. 355. Today, we're talking about the Korean martial art, Taekyong. My name is Jeremy. I'm your host for the show. I'm the founder of Whistlekick. I love martial arts. And that's, that's really what it comes down to. I've been training my whole life. And I believe that martial arts makes people better. So that's what Whistlekick is all about. Growing the martial arts by bringing new people in and keeping people in it. Anything that does one of those two things is part of our business, or at least something that we'll consider doing. So thank you for the opportunity to do that. If you want to check out what we make, you can find that stuff at whistlekick.com. Use the code PODCAST15. Save 15%. If you want the show notes, including a transcript of this, and honestly, we're transcribing every episode going back, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Share this or another episode with your friends. Help us grow this. We're attracting bigger and bigger guests. The bigger the show is, the bigger the guests we get. If there's some dream guest you want to see on the show interviewed, the best way to help us get there is to help the show grow. So thank you for everyone who has helped thus far, and those of you who will continue to help or help in the future. Let's talk about Taekyon. Taekyon, which, you know, let's face it, it's written in Korean. So there's a bunch of different ways we can spell it, but they all pronounce the same. Taekyon is a martial art from Korea. It's known for its fluid and dance-like movements. It employs pumbagi, or stepping on triangles footwork, that aims to trip an opponent without causing a ton of damage. It's a game. If you are familiar with capoeira, it is similar. Taekyon techniques utilize both hands and feet simultaneously to take down an opponent. However, it's not really effective as a ground fighting system. The techniques focus on strikes that include kicking and punching and arm strikes. To complement these strike techniques, Taekyon also incorporates throws and takedowns and grappling techniques like in judo. The exact period of Taekyon's origin is unknown, but there are various sources proving its existence at least a few hundred years ago, although there is some speculation it might be a few thousand years old. I'll give you some overviews of a few accounts of the proof that we have of Taekyon's existence in the past. Taekyon was mentioned in an old book called J. Molbo, also called Man Molbo, which was authored by Lee Sung Ji in the late 1700s. Taekyon is depicted in a painting by Hye San Yu Suk called the Dai Kwai Do from 1850. It shows matches between two people using Sirium, which is Korean wrestling, on the top of the painting, and then below, it's Taekyon. And there's some interesting cultural stuff showing that different people of different cultures were spectating at this event. It was likely at a fair. And I'm not going to dig into all of this stuff because some of it just doesn't really translate as well reading it. So this is where you might want to check out the transcript at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. In 1895, a book called Korean Games with notes on the corresponding games of China and Japan, terrible title, right? Mentions Taekyon as a living martial art, a current martial art. A lot of the credit for the popularity at that point goes to Song Duk Ki, who lived from 1893 to 1987. Man, there's a missed opportunity. Not that long ago. Song was a Taekyon master who studied under a gentleman named Lim Ho. And he co-authored a book called The Traditional Martial Art, Taekyon. And in the book, he says, quote, It cannot be said for sure when and how Taekyon came into existence, but until the end of the Korean kingdom, certain people did Taekyon together. Taekyon was mentioned in a book written by Cho Yong-yeon in 1921 called Heidong Jukji. And... It was written as something that doesn't make sense to read <laughs> to represent Taekyon, and it translates to push shoulder. The writing system used in the book was Idu, and that represents the Korean language using Hanja, the Han Chinese characters. Taekyon, however, does not translate to push the shoulder. Even so, the arm techniques in Taekyon come from the shoulder, and opponents can be pushed and pulled in many ways via these shoulder movements. The book also contains a poem about Taekyon that describes it as flying leg technique. When Korea was invaded by Japan in 1910, the practice of Taekyon and all other martial arts styles was prohibited. The rise in popularity of Neo-Confucianism was also a great factor from you know, pretty much obfuscating Taekyon, getting people to forget it. 
And when the Japanese occupation ended in 1945, Taekyeon was revived through, in part, the work of Song Duk Ki, who was secretly practicing the art during those times. Song particularly practiced the Widai, the high village style of Taekyeon. On June 1st, 1983, Song Duk Ki was certified by the Ministry of Education of South Korea as Ingan Mun Wage, or Living National Treasure, the same time when Taekyeon was classified as an important intangible cultural asset, number 76, by the Korean government. As of this right now, Taekyeon remains the only martial art that receives such classification. Interesting. Son Duk Ki was strong and healthy, even at an old age. At 89 years old, he still taught students, such as Master Do Ki Hyun, and he only had a small house and lived alone because his wife had died and they had no children. He ultimately died in 1987 at the age of 94. Taekyeon was recognized by UNESCO in November 2011, including in its intangible cultural heritage list. Taekyeon is the first martial art to be placed on that list. Taekyeon is distinguished by its dance-like movements, where the fighter changes stance from left to right by stepping forward and backwards while the arms are on guard. The techniques utilize the hands and the legs to execute joint locks and throws. Headbutts are also included. Primarily, the techniques in Taekyeon are divided into three categories. Pumbalgi, Pwalgejit, and Balgi. Pumbalgi, to step the pum, is the dance-like footwork that's executed in the triangle manner, and it's required to be used in competitions. Pwalgejit is using the hands and the arms to defend yourself and to grab the opponent by the neck. Balgil is a collection of foot techniques, the kicks, that involve not just kicking, but tripping and bringing opponents to, your, to the ground in creative and, and fun ways. All the movements in Taekyeon are considered natural to the human body, including the low, the medium, the high kicks, and each of these requires the entire body to be used. The gumsil or ogyomjil movement is the bending and stretching of the knees that is done constantly, which gives Taekyeon its distinct characteristic. Knee bending is never done abruptly, but done gracefully together with arm motions. In competition, the techniques that can be used are limited to grappling and kicking. Headbutts and arm strikes, especially those that are dangerous, aren't allowed. Points are earned when the opponent is thrown to the ground, pushed out of the ring, or kicked in the head. That is, without intentionally causing an injury. For example, kicks to the head are usually fatal. Hmm. I'm gonna, gonna say no on that one, but I'm going off a script here. We've, we've pulled a lot of information from a lot of places. But players do not execute it in full force. Moreover, players do not deliver heavy body blows against each other, unlike boxing or Muay Thai. Matches are usually decided when a player scores two points first. In an interview with Taekyo master Do Ki Hyun, he explained the nature of martial arts, especially Taekyo. And here's a summary of some of what he said. The characteristics of martial arts are the same with the characteristics of the country where they originated. For example, the way the Chinese designed their roofs is very technical and graceful. This is also evident in their operas, where actors have colorful faces and clothes and their movements are very graceful. Similarly, the Chinese martial arts are technical and graceful. In the case of the Japanese culture, it can be noticed that their style is very strong and quick. The Japanese roofs, for example, are very straight and simple, unlike the Chinese. The Japanese like the colors white and black, while the Chinese are very colorful. The Japanese are also simple and very systematic. The Korean culture, on the other hand, sits in between that of China and Japan. While it is also true geographically, the Korean roofs are designed somewhere in the middle with a slight curve. Aside from that, the Korean culture is strongly influenced by nature. In the ancient times of Korea, people had many gods. They had gods for almost every object that they saw in nature, like trees, water, or rocks. This is the reason why Korean martial arts are very natural and comfortable. It can be seen in Taekyeon as one of the traditional martial arts from a very long time ago. The masters of the art also passed on the original techniques to later generations, changing almost nothing from the art. The greatest development of Taekyeon is, as I already mentioned, when it was classified as an important tangible cultural asset, number 76, by the Korean government in 83, together with the recognition of Grandmaster Sung Duk Ki as a living national treasure. And the fact that UNESCO did something similar Honestly, it's kind of mind-blowing. There are a few authorized Taekyeon organizations, the Korea Traditional Taekyeon Association, the Korea Taekyeon Federation, 
the Kyulyun Taekyon Association, and the World Wide Taekyon Organization. Taekyon's been established in a bunch of different countries, and to be honest, I've got a feeling that it's growing. As we've expanded the internet, we've expanded our love of different and older things. If it wasn't for the internet, historical European martial arts wouldn't be anywhere near as popular as they are now. But HEMA's growing rapidly, and it's good stuff. And of course, you know me, I love all martial arts, so the fact that people are bringing Taekyon back just makes me excited. And that's what we got on Taekyon. If you know the history of Taekwondo, you know that Taekyon is an important piece of Taekwondo. So, I want to thank you for listening. If you want to check out the show notes, the transcript, all kinds of other cool stuff, find that at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. This is episode 355. If you head on over to whistlekick.com, you can sign up for the newsletter. You can buy things, support the show, support our efforts at Whistlekick, and use the code PODCAST15 to save 15%. Email me if you want, jeremy at whistlekick.com, or follow Whistlekick on social media. We are at Whistlekick on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. That's all I got for you today. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. 